Hi, I want to talk about the three most commonly used temperature scales if you're working in science in the United States. Now, around the world, the first scale is not used very much, except in some British territories, some US territories, and in British papers, depending on who the editor is of the paper at that given time, but Fahrenheit scale was one of the first standardized temperature scales proposed. And his original scale, set up in 1724, was based on making up an exothermic ammonia salt bath that had one-third ice, one-third liquid water, and one-third ammonia chloride, NH4Cl. Now, the other reference point he used was based off Newton's temperature scale, and that was human body temperature. And he set zero to be the ammonia salt solution, 96 to be human body temperature. And he noticed that freezing water happened around 32 on his scale. Now the reason for the 96 17th century or 16th, 18th century technology, it's really hard to make evenly spaced tents. So it's a lot easier to subdivide things. And using a drafting compass, it's pretty easy to cut in half, then cut the halves in half, and so on. So it's easy to get 32 marks, and then copy that 32 mark scale, copy that 32 mark scale, and so on. So that was the first standardized way we had of measuring temperature. Now, the Celsius scale, as it was first proposed shortly before Celsius' death in 1742, is totally backwards from what we know as the Celsius scale today. Celsius proposed calling freezing water 100 in his units of temperature and boiling water zero in his units of temperature. And there are a lot of thermodynamic reasons why making a smaller number as you go to more energy makes more sense. But that's not what happened. So a year later, folks decided, well, let's switch it. So let's make zero freezing water and 100 boiling water. And the standard was originally called centigrade for 100 marks in between zero and 100, freezing water, boiling water. And that's how that standard evolved today. Well, in 1776, it became pretty clear the original Fahrenheit scale, one, is defined based off body temperature, which can fluctuate, really bad idea. So they noticed that human body temperature, though not stable, boiling water was stable, and it was pretty close to 212. Not quite, it was a bit under 212 in the original scale, but at 212, it gave you 180 Fahrenheits for every 100 Celsius. So in 1776, we redefined the Fahrenheit scale to make water freeze at 32 Fahrenheit and water boil at 212 Fahrenheit. So there are nine Fahrenheit for every five Celsius. You just have to account for the offset of the freezing point of water if you do a conversion. Now, the SI unit for temperature, what we use in science is the Kelvin. And as of May 20th of 2019, World Metrology Day 2019, a Kelvin was defined as the thermodynamic energy change of 1.380649 times 10 to the negative 23 joules. Now, at the limits of our ability to assess that energy, that means that water freezes at 273.15 Kelvin and water boils at 373.15 Kelvin. And the nice thing about Kelvin is it is an absolute energy scale. In classical physics, zero Kelvin would correspond to zero thermodynamic energy. So we start at zero, work our way up. That means the Fahrenheit scale ends at 273.15 Celsius below zero. 
And the Fahrenheit scale ends at negative 459.67 Fahrenheit below zero. Now there is an equivalent in the Fahrenheit unit scale to the Kelvin scale, but most folks that are doing the type of science that would need working with absolute temperature use the Kelvin scale because the United States is a metric nation and by law all of our units are supposed to be metric as signatories of that treaty doesn't quite work out that way in practice but those are the three out of dozens of temperature scales that have survived into the modern era thanks for watching